everybody. Welcome to this day. It is Monday and it's November 16th. We don't have any open meetings today, so we'll just jump right in to tell you who's on our show. Of course, Monday always brings us Jeff Parker and he's got a Laguna Woods update. Then because we've been talking so much about mask wearing, I thought I would go ahead and do one of my segments on wearing our mask and how to appropriately wear it so and why we wear it because there's a lot of uh, science behind why we wear the masks these days. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into our COVID-19 information that we regularly give you. You can go to covid19.ca.gov where you can get all of the governor's plans and he is going to be making announcement here this week. So hopefully we'll have additional information about which direction California is going in. OCHealthInfo.com is where you can get all of your numbers by zip code, city, state, a variety of different uh, information demographics there that you can choose. And you can go to, the wet, or you can go to their hotline at 714-834-2000, or you could go to our website, which is LagunaWoodsVillageAlerts.com, and then you can email us any questions or concerns at info at lagunawoodsvillage.com. Now, it was an absolutely beautiful, pleasant weekend. I hope you had some opportunity to share outside how lovely it was. Now, we are heating up a bit today. We are going to be high of around 84 today, so it is going to be a bit warm, uh, although our overnight lows are in the 50s, so that'll be 58. Tomorrow, 75, 56. Wednesday, 72, 56, Thursday, 70, 54, and then we're going to start our weekend with 69, 52. Now, our sunrise this morning was 624, and the sunset will be at 447. Now, I found a delicious cake. This is a cranberry upside-down cake, and uh, it's just an alternative to our Thanksgiving dessert, so I thought I'd share that with you. And you can find that on chowhound.com. And if you would like to send in a recipe along with a picture of a dessert that you will be making for Thanksgiving, please share it with us. Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. All right, when we return, we will have Jeff Parker, so stay tuned. What? All of it. This is your time. You're ready for what's next. And what's next doesn't include compromise. Don't you have a doctor's appointment? Yeah. Introducing Ava, a new Medicare Advantage plan from Alignment Health Plan that gives you access to a primary care doctor and specialist from the comfort of your own home with 24 hours a day, seven days a week concierge service. Benefits include no monthly premium, dental, vision, and a $0 copay to see a doctor with low out-of-pocket costs, full drug coverage, pet care, and more. Plus over-the-counter dollars and a Part B premium give back of $50 per month. It's the plan built for your time. What next? Well... That novel ain't gonna write itself. Those who are Medicare eligible can call us at 866-628-9431 for more information and your free no obligation gift. Have you been struggling with swelling, aching legs, and varicose veins that keep you from being as active as you once were? Using the latest in advanced techniques such as Venus Seal, Golden Coast Dermatology Skin Cancer and Vein Center offers minimally invasive treatment with better outcomes and quicker recovery times. Dr. Tidwell is an expert in vein care and can help you get back to having healthier and active legs. Golden Coast Dermatology. Call today to schedule your appointment and get back on your feet. To help stop the coronavirus, the CDC recommends to avoid contact with people who are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. Stay home when you are sick, except to get medical care. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. For more information, contact the CDC. A message from Village Management Services. Well, Jeff Parker 
Parker is here with us, and uh, he's always got the best information and uh, the most up-to-date information here. Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good Coming weekend. Off a relaxing weekend. <laughs> I know. I loved it. The weather was gorgeous, and it was just nice and relaxing, although football yesterday, did you enjoy football? I didn't watch that much. I was out in the yard. It was such, such beautiful weather. It was, <laughs> well, the Bears play tonight, so. <laughs> oh, well, fantastic. So well, I, I get lucky and uh, get a separate, separate game. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we'll see how happy you are by Friday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we do have new information regarding COVID, and all weekend, I think people have been disappointed, frustrated, concerned. I mean, we're just kind of all going through all these different emotions because things are changing again. And, and they're reflecting kind of what's going on in the nation um, and the state, is that the, there's just been a big influx in numbers in the last couple of days. We had the last two days, we had 528 cases, and then yesterday it was 639 cases, mm. which is a big jump compared to what we were seeing a couple of weeks earlier where right. we were in the low 200s um, mm -hmm. and sometimes had dropped even down into the 100 range. Mm -hmm. So that's concerning and of course the, the trigger is then the ICUs and the hospital beds. Right. Um, now when you look at those 639, um, obviously any, any death reporting is, is unfortunate. And again, those two deaths that were reported were in non-facilities. Um, so mm -hmm. those are residents in, living in single family homes or apartments um, that unfortunately passed away. The ICU numbers at 90 have, uh, is the concern I think that everybody's expressing and, and seeing that those numbers have gone up. Now 90 is the same name, number for two days in a row, so that hasn't changed. The 242 in hospitalization has gone up just a little bit. It was um, mm -hmm. just a little lower than that in the 235, 239 range um, the other day. So the good news for Laguna Woods, the community of Laguna Woods, which the village is clearly a big part of, um, we're still at um, 87 cases. Okay. Hasn't, that hasn't changed, and nine deaths, which hasn't changed. So we didn't change over the weekend, Good. where we saw those big spikes in the cases throughout the county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to the, the, the numbers that are looking at the seven-day average, um, you can see where we were at six um, per 100,000, and now we're at 5.6. So right. that, that, we talked about that, how that's a good number. However, um, on the news yesterday, it was reported that because of this lag time and because of the current numbers that they have and these spikes, um, tomorrow it's very possible that Orange County may get put back into the purple zone, which is the worst category, tier one, which is widespread COVID. And that's probably based on these case histories, plus that creeping up in the hospitalizations. Now we mm -hmm. won't know for sure. Um, keep our fingers crossed that we stay in the, or, um, in the red. Right. But all of the counties around us have gone in, back into the purple. Mm. And that concerns a lot of people. I guess I, I wonder though, um, and I think it would be worth looking at, is to see, since they have gone back, are they seeing lower numbers? I mean, I haven't checked, so I'm, I mean, I'd be curious to well, know. Well, I know in L.A. County, um, they, they've been in the purple, but they've had huge spikes. They had over 3,000 cases the last two days. Mm. Um, those, so those are way up. So just because you're in one category or another isn't necessarily controlling this process. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's really impacting the cases is twofold. One, people are getting tested so that yeah. you're going to get that number. But secondly, it goes back to, again, I think there's more socialization that has occurred out there and people less careful about wearing their mask mm. and, and washing their hands and everything because right. that again that's still the best defense we have right now positive news this morning about another um shot you know the that could be on the market um fairly soon along with the pfizer one and this one had a very good rating just like pfizer of some like 94 percent mm. success rate the one thing that they said that's real positive about the this new um shot is that it, unlike the Pfizer one, it doesn't require, require the really, really cold storage. So they're thinking that implementation out to um, doctors and drug stores and, and that to get people the, the shot may happen quicker um, huh. with this second one. So okay. I think that's the goal is to get as many of these out there as we can. So if we can get two or three or four that are really, really successful, right. then we have a much better sh chance of getting everybody inoculated that you know wants to get the shot and exactly. get that done as fast as possible 
again, I want to stress that what you hear on TV and the reality that we're wearing, nothing's going to happen real quickly. Right. And so with these numbers going up and the fact that we're not going to see something probably until early in the spring, we're, we're going to be real cautious here in the village with regards to how we reopen anything or if we retrench a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we're not doing anything inside right now, and, right. That, and that's going to stay that way. But we can still do outside activities. Those mm -hmm. are still permitted, and we're going to do that as long as we can make it sure it's safe. Right. And that's where we're at. Good. Well, you know, like I said, I think everyone's kind of frustrated. <clears throat> We've been in this situation for so long, and then now we're looking at possibly extending that. So I think it's a bit on the frustrating side. However, like you mentioned, we are outside still, doing things outside. Thank yeah. goodness our weather's holding nicely where there's yeah. no rain. Beautiful. I mean, if, even if it's cold, we're okay because we have heaters. But nonetheless, if there's rain, then we're kind of in trouble. So That, that makes it difficult. So good. Well, thanks for the update on that. Sure. I appreciate it. I do have a couple more things. I just wanted to remind people that uh, next week we've got Thanksgiving coming up and we will have modified hours with regards to our transportation program. Mm -hmm. There won't be any transportation on Thanksgiving Day. And then the following day, we'll have a modified system with our plan of rides. So make sure if you need a ride on that Friday that you're, you're contacting our transportation um, office with regards to that. Okay. And then um, Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, yes. Don't forget, Restaurant 19 is making available mm -hmm. that you can order Thanksgiving dinner um, with them. Mm -hmm. And it can be, then you can go pick it up or um, at curbside type of activity. So that's really great for some people that mm -hmm. can't get out um, right. or feeling uncomfortable about getting out. So right. um, make sure you take advantage of Restaurant 19 and their Thanksgiving dinners. And then the last one, I know it's a couple weeks beyond that, but um, it get here pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that the Village Holiday Golf Cart um, parade is coming up um, and it's going to be Saturday, December 5th mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock. And so if you want to get registered for that, um, please go on ActiveNet and work with our uh, recreation department to um, get signed up. It was a real big hit um, before, so, so we'll want to do it again and see how many people we can get out there. I like that. At least it gives them something to look forward to. If by chance we can't meet with our relatives and things like that for Christmas. At least that's some nice way to get together Absolutely. with everybody. That's your one way to keep the village and... together. Exactly. All right, well, good. Well, we look forward to that information. And then uh, we are going to have a special segment this week regarding our malware situation. Tell us a little bit about that. So where we're at right now is that we're getting our computers back up all the systems scrubbed and clean so that we don't have any additional malware. We're not only the one that we dealt with right. and got that fixed, but we want to go back through our machines and our and all of our um, software along with our hardware and make sure that there is no other malware that's out there that could affect it. And, and then so we're progressing in two, three different ways. One, making sure we scrub everything clean and get it make that process. Secondly, getting it back into the system, getting it on board so our departments can start using not only the data that they have going forward, mm -hmm. but what was real important for some of our operations was that we have this historic data on what's happened in the last month or two months, especially in those categories. Right. And then the third one is to get our system where it's in, a, in the cloud, in the backup system is the best possible advantage that we can do so that we can call that up anytime we need that with the most security using the technology that's now advanced in this area to protect us as best as we can mm -hmm. um, from these kind of attacks uh, that right. are going on not just in the village, oh, but yeah. are going on all throughout Orange County. And we're still working with the Orange County Sheriff's Department and the FBI with regards to their investigation oh, on wow. what's okay. going on. So what I want to do later this week is I hope to have some additional information on what we've completed, mm -hmm. on what we know, and get and we'll be getting communication out to our community, but I'll be coming on and talking about it in a little bit more detail. Okay, well that's perfect, well thank you. All right, well very good, have a great week. And we'll see you again in we'll just a couple soon. days. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and when we return, we are going to tell you why it is so important to wear a mask, just as a reminder. So stay tuned. It's never too late to improve your health with exercise. Challenge yourself to get moving in the morning. 
Hi, I'm Susan Tuttle. I'd like to encourage you to tune in to Channel 6 each weekday mornings at 7.55. 30 minutes of daily exercise will add years to your life. What are you waiting for? Come join me. It's important for you to get your financial house in order. And so it breaks my heart sometimes when I see widows that come in with a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to their name, and yet their broker has lost two or three hundred thousand dollars in the market when they shouldn't even have been in the market. The most satisfying part that I find in working with retirees is when they come in on their annual reviews and the market has had a, a bad turn, and we know that we can sit down and look at them and say, You haven't lost any money. Vision, the eye doctor's number one choice. We are a community of surgeons and optometrists dedicated to helping you live better by seeing better. We offer advanced lens options to fit your lifestyle. We also offer the latest in laser technology for cataract surgery. We are Envision, the eye doctor's number one choice. With clear vision, all things are possible. To schedule your appointment, contact us at 866-599-2740. Well, of course, we have been told to wear our mask, and there are a variety of different masks, but we wanted to tell you the importance of wearing a mask and why we all need to do it. I know we have many people who say, oh, I don't want to wear a mask, and they do, they do, are, they do feel very uncomfortable, but it's really important that we wear the mask, so we wanted to give you some evidence. The evidence shows that consistently wearing a mask in public was associated with a 70% reduction in the risk of catching SARS. SARS like COVID-19 is a respiratory illness caused by the same family of viruses called coronavirus. So the facts are that places with widespread mask usage has seen a greater success in preventing major outbreaks or reining them in. So many people across the country are refusing to wear masks and this can create problems, obviously, as well as spreading the disease much faster. Now, this is how a mask works. Masks reduce the spread of infectious disease by catching microbes that exp are expelled by the wearer and protecting the wearer from microbes in the environment. Now, why should you wear a mask? Well, when we cough, sneeze, talk, or simply breathe, we are emitting a plume of air and droplets, which are largely composed of saliva, mucus, salts. And if we are infected, potentially dangerous microbes. The smallest of these droplets may hover or drift through the air for hours, exposing anyone who enters that airspace. So in conclusion, wearing a mask is not only protecting yourself, but protecting others for potentially getting the coronavirus. So please wear your mask. Most real estate agents stick to the three P's of marketing. They place it on the MLS, they put up a sign, and pray that it sells. Laguna Premier Realty takes a different approach to marketing your home. From professional and high quality photos, to high definition video, single property websites, and 3D virtual tours. We will make your property stand out and most importantly, sell. So whether you are looking to list your current home or find your dream home in the village, Laguna Premier Realty is here to help. Parkinson's disease is a neurological movement disorder affecting an estimated one million Americans, including many under age 40. It has no cure. Parkinson's is not limited to how a person moves. It can also cause symptoms like depression, fatigue, and impaired speech. Today, there is a new diagnosis every nine minutes, though Parkinson's can be present for years before being diagnosed. The American Parkinson Disease Association is the largest grassroots network in the United States, working to help ease the burden and find the cure. For more than 50 years, APDA has funded pioneering research and provided critical support to those affected by Parkinson's. Visit apdaoptimism.org today to find out how you can help millions live with dignity and optimism. 
Your action today will help APDA put an end to Parkinson's disease. Hi, I'm Vince Ferragamo. I spent some of my best years as an NFL quarterback, but today I've got a new team and we're helping seniors who spent their best years fighting for our country, defending our freedom, and informing the nation. Our hometown heroes need help. AgeWell Senior Services is their lifeline. Nonprofit AgeWell can do all of this because you care enough to give. Please join me in supporting AgeWell. Donate today. Today, we are marking the beginning of a new era as City of Hope opens its first location right here in Newport Beach. We have 500 scientists and doctors who have dedicated their lives to beating cancer. So they use that intellectual capital to try to make sure every patient gets the best care possible that's known to science. today is Shawshank Redemption. Great movie starring Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman. And uh, Andy DeFrenz is sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison for the murders of his wife and her lover and is sentenced to a tough prison. However, only Andy knows he didn't commit the crimes. While there, he forms a friendship with Red, who's played by Morgan Freeman, experiences brutality of prison life, adapts, helps the warden, and et cetera, on a variety of other things, all in 19 years. So that's a really great movie. You can see that today at 2 p.m. and also at 6 p.m. And that is brought to you by Hogue Orthopedic Institute. Now, for those of you who are recently moved into the village and you reside either in Third or United, they will have a new resident uh, welcome, which will be a virtual one. And it will be on Wednesday, November 18th, 4.30 p.m. Um, that's for United. And then later in the month, for those who move into third, now you can go to the lagunawoodsvillage.com website and you can look up new resident and they will go ahead and bring you right to the part where you're going to sign up for that. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do. All right, hopefully you got out this last weekend and you saw the flukes because they were performing at the little village drive-in. And this weekend, we are going to have the Theater Guild, and they're going to be doing their Johnny Carson Show 2020 edition. And I don't believe we have any rain forecasted for the weekend, so that still should be going on. That'll be on Saturday, November 21st at 2 p.m. And you can get tickets at ActiveNet, which is $5 per vehicle. And the way you get to ActiveNet, you go to, you go to um, amenities, recreation, and then you can log into ActiveNet through that. Now, there is an interesting program that is happening through with the Theater Girl called I Am Me. Now, they are, it's called the I Am Me First Holiday Edition. They've done it before, and it's where people tell stories about themselves. And this one is going to reflect those of you who have had, an, had a holiday that has impacted you in some way. So if you would like to participate and listen in, you can send, the, send an email for the Zoom link to theaterguildlw at outlook.com. Calm. Now, one last thing here is we have the rummage sale that is happening uh, this weekend. However, you can donate items for sale on Tuesday and Thursday of this week from 1 to 3, and you just drive to the Florence Sylvester Senior Center, and you can drop it off there. That You just open up your trunk, and they'll take the items. Again, you can drop those items off on Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 3, and then the sale is this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. Now there is a dinner that's coming up. Now I know that Jeff earlier in our program mentioned Thanksgiving, but there's also a different one that's going to be December 5th. Now this is a little bit different where it's an evening apart, but together it's being put on by AgeWell. It is a live cooking, music giving in impact. So they, you can join them for a four course meal in support of the senior community. And it's everything you need delivered to your door to cook alongside world-renowned Chef Asmin of Sapphire Culinary Group. Now you can bring a friend, you can let your grandchildren, let anyone you know can do it and they can participate. So it's $75 for a single dinner. 
and a dinner for two is 150. Now, if you would like to participate in this, you need to email, or pardon me, you can go to the website, myagewell.org, and get all of the information about what kind of food. Now, it is a little bit on, you know, maybe a little pricey, but the good thing is, is that you'll get a really good gourmet meal that you're gonna be able to cook alongside the excellent chef. So that looks like fun. I think you should give that a try. It might be something good to do. All right, let's take a look at our weather one last time. It is going to be warm today, but overnight in the 50s, but it still is going to be a gorgeous week. 84 today, 58 overnight. Tomorrow goes down to 75, 56, and then a little lower on Wednesday, 72, 56. Then we've got Thursday, 70, 54, and then Friday, 69, 52 into our weekend. Now, everything looks wonderful for the weather. It doesn't look like we have any rain in the forecast, so that'll be great for our weekend. And then, of course, you can always watch our program here at 12.30 and 5, which are repeats Monday through Saturday. And you can tune in again tomorrow. We'll be right here at 9 a.m. for additional great information about your community, the village. So have a great day in the village. Happy Monday. Stay healthy. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. My name is Angela, I'm 51 years old and I was diagnosed with a heart murmur. Before the surgery I was struggling to breathe. I was missing out a lot on playing with my son. I decided to go to Hogue from Nevada to have my mitral valve repair because the surgeons there are excellent. My personal approach to patient care is really taking care of a patient as if they were a member of my family. After the surgery, I can chase him and run around and play with him as much as he wants. <laughs> it's like a miracle. It's like this patient made it through the toughest time in their life, and it's, it's an awesome feeling. The feeling to see these patients recover, especially when they're critically ill like that, it's just the best feeling in the world. We wanted this to be one of the top cardiovascular centers in the region, the state, the nation and to be recognized for that. We've achieved that. If I had to go back and make the same choice, I would choose Hogue again. They treated me like family. This changed my life, and now I get to be with my son. Hi, I'm Ann Mundell Noel, audiologist and owner of Amazing Hearing. As an audiologist, I have the education and expertise to assess, diagnose, and treat hearing loss. Hearing aids are only one part of the treatment process. The way we have been taught to fit, counsel, and use hearing therapy is what makes us different. Amazing hearing. Audiologists with the education, expertise, and empathy to change how you hear. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Tip. Toss. Take action. Don't give mosquitoes a fighting chance. Give mosquitoes a fighting chance.